And Kierbu, he's sneaking around the back. This might be this might be the game-winning move. He gets the spray down on Taco, and that leaves FNX 30 health. And in a one-on-two, how does he escape from this high ground position? As soon as they find out that he's there, he's trapped. He doesn't. He has to get lucky with the angle, and it's not going to happen, although he does get a very close to hitting the shot there on Kierbu. Just fully commits to taking his step out into the open. Device is going to be able to shoulder peek him to death. However, and there it is. The headshot that does it. 16 to 12. And Astralis, they... 2016. Luminosity. SK. Um ano de glórias. Um ano que o brasileiro fã de CSGO nunca vai esquecer. Mas também o ano que vimos pela última vez... Coldzera, Fallen, Fer, Taco e FNX jogando juntos. Ontem, dia 2, completou 6 anos da última partida do FNX pela SK Gaming. E foi uma partida bem esquisita, muito esquisita mesmo. Eu me pergunto, será que ela foi esquisita? E vocês entenderam por que eu tô falando isso? Porque o FNX sabia que era a última partida dele pela SK? Ou será que depois dela, eles decidiram que o FNX sairia do time? Vem comigo que eu te darei a resposta. Já pensou ganhar skins apenas jogando CSGO? Pois agora tem como. Faça parte da matilha na Face faceit.com, faça seu cadastro, entre no nosso clã, crie sua lobby e jogue. Jogue muito. Os jogadores mais ativos serão recompensados com muitas e muitas skins no final da temporada. faceit.com, faça parte da matilha, link na descrição. CSGO.net Ao depositar, utilize o cupom DOG e ganhe 40% de bônus Até o dia 5, quem utilizar o cupom DOG ainda pode participar do sorteio de 3 Butterflies Doppler Mais 2 M9 Doppler CSGO.net Cupom DOG Link do site e do formulário para participar do sorteio na descrição O tem o inventário mais caro do Brasil Avalia Sejam bem-vindos a mais um vídeo aqui no canal Cachorro 1337. Rapaziada, quem não lembra ou quem ao menos não sabe o que aconteceu no ano de 2016, quando o Brasil ganhou dois Majors, o primeiro definindo a tag da Luminosity, depois a SK, enfim. Quando isso aconteceu, eu ainda não acompanhava a CSGO. Eu comecei a acompanhar a CSGO lá pro final de 2016, bem quando o FNX foi quicado do time. Na época, isso pegou todo mundo de surpresa. E depois desse kick, os cinco jogadores que ganharam os dois Majors nunca mais voltaram a jogar juntos. Bem, o FNX saiu da SK no dia 2 de dezembro de 2016 e deu lugar ao Phelps. Alguns meses depois, o Phelps foi quem saiu da equipe e entrou o Bolts. Em 2018, o Taco anunciou sua saída da SK e pela primeira vez um gringo no time. O Stewie é americano. Logo na sequência, a tag da BBR comprou esses jogadores e Bolts saiu para dar lugar ao Tarik, o outro americano. Essa lineup não deu muito certo e na virada de 2018 para 2019, Stewie e Tarik foram embora. Taco e Phelps voltam à equipe. Pouco tempo depois, sai Phelps, entra Lucas. Sai Coldzera, entra KNG. Sai Lucas, entra um argentino, Meyern. Sai Meyern, entra TRK. E aí depois, Fer e Taco são quicados pela MBR. Fallen não gosta, sai. E aí o Fallen para passar um tempo na Liquid. O Taco criou o projeto com o Godsent, que depois saiu para 00 Nation para jogar com Coldzera. Que, mano, nesse meio tempo passou por Phase, Complex, enfim. Mais recentemente, vimos Taco e Coldzera na 00. E FNX de volta com Fallen e Ferna Imperial, né? Mas juntos os cinco, nunca mais. E hoje eu trago para vocês o último mapa do FNX pela SK Gaming. A última partida desses cinco caras juntos. Já vou pedir, obviamente é padrão, se inscreva no canal. Falta pouco para batermos um milhão de inscritos, então faça parte da matilha. É só um clique, mano. Se inscreva no canal. Se você já é inscrito, deixa o like. O like é importante pra mim, é realmente muito importante. Além de eu perceber que vocês gostaram desse tipo de vídeo, né, e assim eu trazer mais futuramente, ajude o YouTube a divulgar esse vídeo para mais pessoas e eu ganho mais inscritos e aí eu chego mais rápido no primeiro milhão. 2 de dezembro de 2016. SK Gaming versus Astralis. E 
League Season 2, a SK já havia vencido Natus Vincere e Dignitas, times que até então eram terceiro melhor do mundo e quinto melhor do mundo, respectivamente, e contra as Astralis disputariam uma vaga na final desse torneio que valia mais de um milhão de dólares. MD3, primeiro mapa Overpass, 16 a 11 para Astralis, segundo mapa Train, e o que aconteceu nessa partida vocês irão descobrir agora. I think SK is going to get this one. Like the key for me is like just watch where they rotate fur because when they have a good read on that CT side, they'll have him over in the other side when it's going to be an attack. There's so a stay in your chairs. But they they are struggling somewhat on the T side as well. Como vocês podem ver, todos os jogadores da SK estavam com a hashtag Força Chape ali no nick. Isso porque quando essa partida aconteceu, o acidente da Chapecoense havia acontecido há menos de uma semana. Well, they really do have to get that strong CT side. So it's actually almost a good thing that they start on CT or on T rather SK because then what they need to achieve in that second half. So we'll see how it pans out here because already there's action oh can't be trying for that shot it's gonna be glaive to pick it up though fur maybe a little bit of tunnel vision towards where Kebby was falling back from. Right now, SK Gaming, because they lose that first man over at Alley, they instead want to go towards the B site, which historically is easier to get the bomb plant on, but they have to charge forward and fall and taking point. He's trying to get up to Astralis and find a kill very quickly here. He is aggressive play coming out of the Brazilian captain. Can he make it work? The smokes is up as well. Glaive gonna pick up one. There's a good shot from Fall and he takes down Sip. He needs to do more. FNX is there as well. Has fallen right afterwards, and now it's a two on three. The bomb is only just down, it hasn't ticked far enough. They need to stay alive here. The rest of SK and just keep it going. Great shot from Gold Zero. Dupree gets caught mid air. Now the diffuse is in. Can they stop it? Oh, fallen. I think he could have kept that going, but now Glaive is going to get the kill. And I don't think Gold Zero can get there in time. He has to run for it, but Glaive is already on the diffuse, and that's going to be the round. Astralis will pick it up. Dupree, Kebby, and Glaive all in front of the wall, which means anyone trying to push through now is going to have such a hard time. They're not even really so much trying to push through, they are trying to just slither into the bomb side. Not sure about that one. I feel like that's a that's too much of a risk. Were they expecting Astralis to come look for them after the smokes went up? Yeah, I'm wondering about that as well, because Gabby is relentless. What a round! The counter SK gaming. Kirby with the peek over towards Alley to start things off, but then Dupree. Taco charging into the A site. This is what he's very good at, just the aggressive running gun style. And wouldn't you know it, he's gonna pick up the first kill on Glaive now that leaves Dupree isolated in the corner of the bomb site. He actually gets caught mid-air. A wonderful headshot being thrown out by Fallen there. They will lose FNX in the meantime, and the bomb is down for the moment. That's gonna buy time. Because Zipnix is in connector, and he was actually worried. He was actually rotating a little bit back towards B, but that bomb has now been planted, so it's clear for Astralis now. But still, there was a moment where they didn't, weren't quite sure what was going on, it looked like. There's the one spray, Kebu. Can he refocus on Fallen? He's out there, and he's going to catch him, and that's a full retake. They don't lose anybody in that 3v4. 7-0-1 for uh, Glaive. Yeah, Glaive got a couple of those in the anti-eco, so still didn't have a discussion with his team. Here, they're going forward immediately in the fifth round. SK Gaming realizing that uh, that last round in particular. But it looks like they're going to make their way towards the B bomb side. Device repositioning himself to try and get a clearer shot at anyone crossing over that bomb. But actually, they're on the sidewalk, flashing their way through. They line up for Sip, and he's going to be up two big kills there. Going for a third one. He's almost out of health. Backup is coming as well. And now just falling left. And he was in the back line with no time left. Five seconds. He actually has to try and die before the time runs out here. We'll do that successfully. So nobody goes down. More than 10,000 at the bank before the revi on the on the grenades. We needed we needed that much. But I mean, we're only a third of the way into the half here, but a great start. Device taking out Fallen. That is a strong way to get off. To see if they can't get the bomb plant. And it looks like they aren't going to waste any time this time. Taco just charges forward. He's going to get spotted by Zipnix out of the open, looking for that one tap headshot. But Zipnix is staying alive. And Zipnix just needs to stay alive because he hasn't spotted the bomb. That bomb is going to get planted now, and now the rotate should come through from his teammates, but his teammates weren't taking any risks by over-rotating off the A site either. Definitely not. FNX is really far behind the rest of his team. That could be a huge win later on, but right now, they just need to defend this bomb. They're quite far back in the site, which I'm not always a fan of, but they're doing good damage at the moment. Taco very nearly out of the round. If they have any grenades left, they could have taken him out already. Dupree will pick up the kill. Three versus four. SK need this. They need to hold on to it now. Two versus four. It can still be done. The smoke is down in front. They don't know Cold Zero is here. He's going to pick up the one kill. Wild spray coming through. He can't survive. Going to end up going down to Kirby. If they get less than four rounds, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I think that's too far-fetched, basically, even for SK, even on train. Flashbangs go out. Device falling back. He's trying to reposition a little bit. Does spot out that uh, smoke in the corner. What <laughs> a flick to take out FNX. He's just that fast today, it seems. Device is on point. And Device with the follow-up. 
Took him a second, but he gets a shot on Fallen. He just wanted to keep us guessing there for a moment, but... Now he's close to the top here. 11 kills on him and just one death. And to make that 12, in fact, Dupree going to be going down in return, but... Two versus four, and... SK, they're now they are starting to seem panicked and a little bit broken as a team. I feel like there's just not that uh, focus that we've been seeing from them in the past. A nice headshot from Cold Sierra. Two versus three, 22 seconds left. They're trying to move a little bit closer, but now they're running out of time. They just don't have time to play this game. They need to get up and get these kills, and Sip gonna pick up one. Leaves Taco one versus three, and he has to either save the AWP or get himself killed in the next 10 seconds. It's gonna be it. I I want to see way too much cash in the bank, so we'll see. The 11th round is coming up here. They're trying to make it way down sidewalk. A little bit slow, in fact, creeping their way in, but they run into the vice. Glaive as well gonna be there in the corner, and Sip picking up one, two, then three, and it will be an 11th round here. And now it's the force, and we're seeing the depths of the SK. And then the follow-up flash does slow them down a little bit. Now, Sip, he hears them coming. Back up is being called for. Glaive is on the side as well. Great headshots again. Glaive trying to fall back. Fallen going to catch him. This is what we need out of SK. There's the spray down. Fur will take care of you. And now Dupree and Device left. Two on four. Great power coming out of SK. They need much more of that. Now it's focus time. They have the one on three. And it's Device still left. They can't give it up to him. There should be no way for him to win this especially with the AWP. With an AK, perhaps. I mean, if he can get the shot here on Fallen. Let's go. Nope, Fallen. Too wise, too wise. Just makes some noise and backs off, and now they're gonna just block him in. There's now nowhere for Device to go. Fallen has got the exit, so it's more a matter of Device staying alive than anything. Nice shot there from Cole. Well, you kind of expect that from Cole. He doesn't monster up. There we go. All right, they hunt him, and they've broken the streak. Now, Anders, you said it, they need the four rounds because they didn't have the op before and they wouldn't have had the money to buy the op as well. Good to see. I mean, that, that has to be, I think, the, the sort of the basic feature of this. Taco gets taken out before they even get anywhere close. They're still trying to make that play for the smoke work, but they've lost two people. And now it's a five versus three. The flashbangs are raining in. Astralis, just the counter grenades are so powerful right now. And obviously that early kill from Device taking the tip off the spear. And now it's actually a three on three. In the flashes, Cold and Fallen pick up Achilles and Fallen trying for that flicker, almost taking out Glaive, but he doesn't get it. And now that leaves FNX alone to clutch at 1v3 with a minute 14 left on the clock. That's a good thing. Keep that in mind. He has a lot of time to work with here, but it doesn't matter. Device comes out of nowhere and takes him down. In fact, they enjoy watching the suffering of his game. In the 14th round, trying for another B push, but look at the flank coming in from Kirby. He's holed away in T spawn. That's the key here, and Glaive has already rotated over as well. Three players soon to be on the site. Fallen does find the kill on Dupree, however, so that's going to create some space for SK, but then Zipnix through the smoke will get one spray, and that opens it up for Glaive to get the flank on Taco. This is all over the place. Zip with the drive by, survives with one HP. He's still here, and then Cold, the force of nature. We might actually have it work out for once, SK Gaming, in the chaos. Trying for it. Cold gonna get a great kill in there. Now a second one. Getting a little bit of money into the... He's there with the AWPs. Very aggressive setup. They gotta be careful they don't give him an opportunity there. Right there and he catches Cold with a grenade in hand. Out of time. Kirby will be going down and return. That's Fallen picking up that shot with the AK. They gotta have this round SK and they, they know it. All the pressure is on them right now. A lot of grenades coming in here trying to... Got the high ground here, Glaive. He's still waiting for it. It's a four on four with FNX being quite low. The bomb gonna get denied. Dupree, what a great boost coming out of Astralis here. Improvised just as the bomb is about to go down. That leaves it in a four on three. And now the bomb will finally be planted, but everybody's here. Good shot from Glaive. Gonna be taken down FNX. Fur and Taco left. Two versus four, making the two on three. Spray comes through. Taco picks up one. They need this. Taco with a double kill and Device not quite hitting the shot. He's gonna take down Fur. And now Taco, can he close off what he started? He can, triple kill, a great round from Taco. Um primeiro half, muito difícil para a equipe da SK, 12 a 3 para o time da Astralis. A SK perde o segundo pistol do jogo, mesmo assim consegue crescer no jogo. And most particularly, Glaive, Glaive has to have an answer for it. There has to be a reason why, and he's given himself and his team the best chance possible to set it up. 12 to 3, and FNX gets annihilated immediately by Kirby. So the young star, he's still at it, and the push begins, no time wasted, cold flashed. 
They need to find another kill here, Astralis, to give themselves some space to work with, though. And Kerry's gonna spot a second man over by Ali. Gets the drop on Fallen, but he can't hit the shot. Fallen is so isolated, he's gonna be going down first. They're all around him. He's getting surged at the moment, and Taco alone, one versus five. Just too much of an ask for him right here. He's gonna get the one kill. He actually hits that mid-air shot, but the bomb is down and they're all around him. They're not even afraid to peek him right now. What could he possibly do? Astralis, I mean, this is this is a way to cement the victory. Normally, but Astralis, this is incredible. They've taken down Nip. That, that wall that they put up on the CT side, obviously, it has to be built with something. And uh, so she said 75 kill to start off is not a bad way to get going. Thinking about going up Pop Dog, but he's gonna fall back over to the A side and they're gonna stick to this SK gaming. This is all on Taco now and he's, he managed to pick up the first kill already. Can't be instant trade from him. Gets the headshot to start things off. And Zipnix will catch the rotators out as well. Somehow Astralis are fighting back into this round. Yeah, they are. Two versus three though. A little bit of uh, lack of health on SK though. Cold Sierra and Fur both quite low at the moment, but no bomb plant. That's what they really need. Fur is creeping up even before the bomb is attempted. That's a big risk and maybe it's gonna actually work out. He's got the drop on device. We're trying to get that bomb plant down. Second kill of the round for Fur. And now that leaves Sip and he drops a fallen. This is this round for SK, but it worked out. Glocks on device. Just to be the old one out. P250, some well, it's been rained in there. Maybe could be a bomb plant here. They're certainly trying for it. Sip, don't think they can stop him. And that's a very effective round. They get a bomb plant in. Dupree even gets a kill on Fur for some reason. And dropping a little bit low, Cold Zero clocked in the head. Long range. What a fantastic round from the Astralis. Look at this, Glaive. Glaive. Oh, he does get the kill eventually, but that definitely looked a little bit too scary. Kirby nearly drops. Who was that? Cold down to six HP. But still, whoa, what is this? They're never gonna expect this. Does it work though? One for one trade already? So aggressive from Astralis, nothing to announce their presence. They're already out onto the A site nearly. SK, they've got a scramble. Need to get in here. Taco trying to get out of the smoke. He's gonna be going down. Sipnix with the kill. Now the bomb plant happening in Dupree. Can he stay alive in the corner? Is he gonna flash his way through? He tries for it. He actually just swaps right into C Connector, so doesn't even go and fight them. Three on three, and an SK, they're pushed all the way back here. He's gonna be taking Kirby down as Cold here with the shot. Now they're trying for the defuse, and Dupree gets taken out. Can't do anything. Defuse inside the smoke. What's going on where SK were calling for the stop because it doesn't make any sense. Those, like, it's gonna come down to the opening in that case. I mean, SK setup is not so great for this, but a great start for Fallen. Gonna take out KRB before they even make it into the A yard. Now the push is coming through. The smoke's out down. Fallen finding a second kill. They finally get the refrag on FNX, but Fallen alive in the corner, and he's really come alive in this game now. Just shows the barrel of the gun while the Fen Elfer and Cold Sierra pick up a kill each and device. Nothing he could do with 10 seconds left. Gonna try and fall back and purpose apart from making some noise of that A side. Look at the boost that's going on in main. They really want Fallen to come and peek them here. I think device right now, his aim is just to fight Fallen somewhere, but before that can happen, oh no, he misses that shot. He's just looking for this fight everywhere he can, but he's just never finding it. Cold Sierra will take him down eventually and finds a headshot on Glaive. And now Dupree and Sip are left. One versus five. This is this is a problem that's very hard to deal with if you're a star. Oh, you just try it around where you try to execute. I am gonna say that I am a little bit worried to see if the vice miss a shot like that. We'll see if they can close the distance with the Tech Nine. Sure, this can work out. For a great counter flash coming out. He's gonna try for the spray a little bit. Has it there? Eventually goes down, but the rest of SK are there to close it out, and that will be a double kill for Fallen once again. He's up to 20. We get within the realm of possibility here that SK Gaming, they make this happen. There we go. Device is rewarded for his patience this time around, and he knows that somebody's holding close electric as well, so there's some good information. The follow up, hoping to get the wall bang as well. Flash out as well, but does he realize? Taco's right behind him in the smoke. So he's gonna be waiting for it. Taco still hits the headshot. How could it be possible? It's not, and now it's back at a four on four. And first sneaking up, he does catch someone with a grenade in hand. Otherwise, Device maybe could have got that kill. Flashbang goes out here. Taco trying to buy time, but he can't. Kebu will be taking him down. Four versus three, a chance. Finally, in the second half for Astralis to actually have an impact here. They're putting out the grenades. They're trying to force them back. They even have that man advantage. And the Molotov on just to try and force out Glaive, but there's no one there to catch him as he swings up from behind the train. Fur, FNX, and Cold Sierra. This is going to be a near impossible retake, especially now that Fur is out of the round. Cold Sierra and FNX, maybe time to think about saving these guns.
Yeah, they haven't overextended either, but it's still possible for FNX to get some crazier things happen in the past. Looking for the shot, big spray battle here from Debray, but he will eventually find the kill on FNX, and it's on Cold Zera now with the 1v4 on his hands, and more importantly, he's trying to save this op, but he gives it away. Slave spots him, mid-air duck hunting, Cold Zera. He gets the shot. Will survive with the AWP nicely. Oh, I love it. Hey, Fallen. Boom, headshot, and no fall, no possible? No possible retake as well. The anti-flashes are just too good. You can have the nades in hand. Smoke just clearing now. Debris, that's the timing, and he's roasting alive. Fur Chuck does an incendiary in and out. Astral is just trying to barrel through, but it's not going to happen just yet. They are trading effectively, but the rotation coming through is going to deny it, and it's just going to be Glaive surviving to get onto the site itself with the bomb plant. Yes, but a 1v3 on his hands. Cold FNX and Fallen still alive here for SK Gaming. He's sandwiched in. He has to go active here. He can't just wait. He has to go and find them. Otherwise, they're just going to circle in around him. And I think he knows it. He's walking underneath Fallen, spotting him out. And that's a great kill here. The Brazilian captain before it even gets to anything here. So that's the that's the challenge that Astralis are facing right now. They are out and a little bit of a missed shot from Fallen, but he still picks up the kill. And there you see, as they try and come through the smoke, they just get whittled down. No bomb plan either. KB drops and nobody dying from SK. Brushing the dreams of Astralis here. Yeah, and that would be... Be a nightmare, but what an entrance. Taking down one, Taco in so much trouble. He's gonna go for the spray, but it doesn't work. And Dupree picks up FNX, just as you say it. It doesn't work out. Grenade gonna explode Cold Sierra. And now that leaves Fallen one versus four, and he drops the device for, um, for Astralis. They just need one more round, and they're gonna go to the Grand Finals for the first time in a very long time. And especially against a team like SK would be a tremendous performance here. Dupree gonna be going down, a refrag from Sitnix. They're going fast and hard out into this bomb side again. It hasn't worked so far in this half, but maybe it will this time. Not gonna get the shot and they fall off the train. Fallen just at the edge of the smoke. He's so clever right now. The flashes are in, but they're flashed on the other side. They can't capitalize on it. He's on the ladder and he's gonna be going down two versus three and no bomb plan yet. Device will pick up the kill there on Cold Sierra. It leaves FNX and Taco and Kierby. He's sneaking around the back. This might be this might be the game-winning move. He gets the spray down on Taco, and that leaves FNX 30 health. And in a one-on-two, how does he escape from this high ground position? As soon as they find out that he's there, he's trapped. He doesn't. He has to get lucky with the angle, and it's not going to happen, although he does get a very close to hitting the shot there on Kirby. Just fully commits to taking his step out into the open. Device is going to be able to shoulder peek him to death, however, and there it is. The headshot that does it. 16 to 12, and Astralis, they have done it. They've succeeded. Rapaziada, eu fiz com muito abaixo, vocês viram, 9 barra 22. Posso estar enganado, né, mas a impressão que dá pela afeição dele durante a partida é que ele tava desanimado, não sei. E, muito provavelmente, ele já sabia que seria quicado. Por quê? Esse jogo aconteceu dia 2 de dezembro. Dia 3, ou seja, no dia seguinte, saiu a notícia que ele tava fora do time. Eu duvido que eles tenham tomado essa decisão em menos de 24 horas. Eu duvido mesmo. Mas parece que eles já sabiam, parece que tava todo mundo meio mais pra lá do que pra cá. Vocês podem até comentar, pô, Dog, eles não teriam chego a semifinal se fosse isso. Mas é que, rapaziada, nessa época, mesmo perdendo pra Astralis, na época, a SK ainda era um dos melhores times do mundo. Não é à toa que depois com o Phelps eles voltaram a ganhar tudo, né? Só não ganharam o Major em 2017, mas fora isso ganharam... Tudo, literalmente tudo. Enfim, é isso, rapaziada. Espero que vocês tenham gostado do vídeo. Só lembrando, todos os dias aqui no canal Caixa 1337, dois vídeos novos. Então, se você curtiu um conteúdo da hora do CSGO, esse é o canal perfeito pra você, ó. Se inscreva, ativa o sininho e passe aqui todos os dias às 14 e 19 horas para não perder nenhum vídeo. É isso aí, mano. Eu e eu vou ficando por aqui. Até o um próximo vídeo no canal Caixa 1337. Falou!